Hello again, six twisted weather freaks, and welcome to a special edition of This Week in Weather. I'm your host, a meteorologist, DT from Weather Risk, your Colonel of Chaos, your Captain of Confusion, your Commander of Catastrophe. Let's get right to it. First, I have to apologize about doing the update. I wanted to get out much earlier. I tried writing it and putting it on the website, but it was just becoming a book because it was so interesting and so intricate and so complicated. So after spending an hour and a half of writing, I'm not kidding you, I've actually been writing for 90 minutes. I decided to hell with it. I'll just make a freaking video and put it out there. So that's what I do here. This will not be a full video. It won't be nearly as long as the other ones, but there's a lot of information in it, so let's get right to it. Now, this was the map which got me and other people interested about a potential snow or winter weather event, the first one, on December 9th or 10th. This was the European model. The GFS showed the same sort of thing. And as I talked about in the previous video and on the updates on the website and on the uh, Facebook page, the key to get this event was <clears throat> this short wave here. You can see it. This area in black, this is a short wave, a little bend in the, uh, in the jet stream right here in Missouri. And um, these features staying apart. You see these two features on the west coast of North America? This is a short wave, just like this one, a trough, and a little, a little trough here. But these two features are not together. What happens is they split the jet stream. So you have your southern jet stream here. See this, the southern jet stream right there. That brings the moisture. And here's a northern jet stream that brings down the cold air. And there's your 50-50 low. Remember we talked about that, the 50-50 low? So this system has cold air. It stays to the south, and you get your snowstorm in the mid-Atlantic. There's your blocking pattern. Remember this? The blocking pattern right up in here in Greenland. Okay, and as I said, the key was that after the cold front comes through on December 7th, if enough cold air gets in and this map verifies, then you get your snowstorm in the mid-Atlantic, or snow or ice or snow to rain, but something of significance potentially around December 9th or 10th. But again, the key is this has to work out, and we have to get the cold air in. Okay, that's what the data was showing. Now, here's the new data as of this morning, last night and this morning. Things have changed. <coughs> this is the Saturday 12Z midday GFS model. Okay, now look what's happened here. See, you have these two features now merging. See this into a gigantic trough. Now, that is not the same as this. See how these features were separated, right? Let's do that again. You see how they're merging? So, when these features merge, you now have a big trough here. Well, if you have a trough here, you have to have a ridge over here. Why? For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So remember that physics you learned in high school that you thought was all bullshit? Okay, actually kind of useful. <clears throat> and the weather business is very important. So this trough gets very amplified and pushes down towards Baja, California. Look at the size of this thing. British Columbia, northern British Columbia, all the way down to Baja. That's a massive trough. And that causes this ridge to pop. So there's the short wave approaching Missouri. It's in Kansas, Nebraska. But because this ridge is now amplifying, this thing is forced into the Great Lakes. And we'll see that in just a second. That what that does is that forces the whole system much further north. So instead of going into Kentucky, Virginia, look where it is. It's near Chicago in southwest Michigan or maybe northwest Indiana. Now, when the low goes up this way, Okay, all of this is now mild air coming north, and all this is rain. I mean, it's only snowing in northern Wisconsin, and that's a pretty mild system. If you're in December, mid-December, and you're only getting snow in northern Wisconsin, this is a warm system. <clears throat> now, you do have your big cold high up here, but it's, it's too far to the north. This low is tracking so far up towards Chicago that it's pulling warm air. This is rain in Pennsylvania. Rain is going to be rain in, in, in southern New England if this is right. If this is right, I'm not saying it is. I'm just saying if this is correct. <clears throat> so that's why it's a big change. That is not the same thing as having low here or in North Carolina. So big difference. Okay. <clears throat> now, let's take a look at some other maps. Here's the European, a comparison of the European. Now, uh, this is a, the, the map to the European solution, so we can see the difference. So we looked at this. Now let's compare what's going on. Remember, this is what we saw on December 1st, okay? This was the map here December 1st, remember? Valid for December 9th. Remember, just show this, okay? So this is essentially this map. I just posted it here so you can see it, okay? Now look what the Europe, this is what the European is doing now. <clears throat> you can see what it's doing. Again, monster long wave trough, not separate features, 
one giant feature and that pops the ridge so this feature instead of being in Missouri look where it is now Michigan or northern Indy Ohio okay and also you remember the 50 50 low here remember this gone completely gone no 50 50 low at all massive changes just massive so of course it takes it up to the north we'll see in a second <clears throat> now this here is the same thing this is the GFS again this was the map from December 1st and we can see let me bring this forward here we can see um, there's the there's the system in Missouri there's your 50 50 low there's your block right what happens the GFS these features combine see how they combine into a massive trough again northern British Columbia the Baja California that causes a ridge to form and this system in Missouri is now in Ohio look at that okay and is there a 50 50 low here not even a hint monster ridge all the way up the great green Greenland no 50 50 low as a result you have a totally different pattern so that's what the, that's why the GFS does that because of this okay and what happens from the European what does that solution look like let's look at the European well the European is not as far to the north <clears throat> and that's because we can see you see the, the the piece of energy on the European is further south it's in Ohio as opposed to Michigan but the difference is important because here it is now this is a today's European Saturday okay there is the low but it's not Chicago oh no 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 it is in Indiana see that further south and because of that you have more cold air in, a, in Quebec coming south as a result the European has a snowstorm in northern Pennsylvania New York State northern New Jersey maybe New York City don't know yet <clears throat> might be snow to rain snow to rain on the coast of Connecticut and then snow in central and maybe northern New England so there is something of significance on December 9th and 10th on the European model and of course, this here is the Canadian model now the Canadian model has something in northern Virginia uh, more of more significance okay it's rain in Richmond but Charlottesville is snow or rain DC is snow Winchester Martinsburg you know um, <clears throat> Cole Pepper Harrisonburg all the way up into Pennsylvania New Jersey on the on the uh, Canadian this is the Canadian model here as you can see uh, bring it forward there you go and you can see this Canadian model right here they're a nice system now what happens is that the Canadian model takes a system like this to the south so the cold air comes in and the other reason is the Canadian model does not have this monster trough here on the west coast so that's another reason why now if we look at the uh, GFS remember what the GFS is doing way to the north here but if you look at the GFS ensemble it's different the GFS ensemble has the low in Kentucky not Chicago see the difference big big difference and if we look at the different members you can see these red numbers different members of the ensemble some of them are quite further to the south so this is a much colder looking solution than what this is so that's something to keep in mind okay <clears throat> so in summary where do I stand on the December 9th or 10th it's probably a decent I still think we have a decent winter weather event northern Ohio Pennsylvania New York New Jersey maybe New York City so southern New England if the system stays further south I think there's a chance for some ice as far south as say Fredericksburg or Charlottesville DC northern Virginia Maryland that'll go over to rain but I think there'll be could be some ice mixed into it um, so I'm not yet convinced and again uh, part of the problem here is I don't know if this solution of this monster trough is correct and I don't know if the model is, is taking it too far to the north so I'm not yet convinced it's going to be all rain I mean clearly it does look warmer um, <clears throat> and like I said I do think there's a shot that it could be more snow um, you know in Pennsylvania New York State and uh, New England and <clears throat> maybe some ice or and changing terrain in DC Philly Charlottesville Harrisonburg you know Winchester that sort of thing Frederick <clears throat> so we'll see how that works out all right let's talk about the next system which is December 12th 13th to 14th there's again same kind of problem here this is the GFS now the GFS has the first system it actually has two different short waves two different systems this is 12 and 13 what it does here is there's the block now the block is very strong here all right and there's the main piece of energy see it's over the Great Lakes 
The problem is that there's a rule in meteorology, just like in the weather business, one of the rules in the atmosphere says you can't have two equally intense low pressure areas next to each other. They have to go around each other. Okay, you can't have them next to each other. You can't take low pressure and drive it into a block. It can't do this. This is wrong. This is completely wrong. So what happens is the system is forced to go underneath the block, you see? And look what it does. See what it does here? So this is the system on the 12th, and this is the system on the 13th. So this one goes underneath it, and this one is, tries to do it. So this is the 12Z run, you see? See how it's trying to take them to the block? And this is the 18Z run. See how it's taking to the south, going underneath it. See what it's doing? So the model is trying to figure out the blocking pattern. The GFS is trying to figure it out. So you got to give it credit for that. This is the 12Z run, like I said here. This is the 18Z run. See what it does? There's the low in the Great Lakes. But this is now in Kentucky. It's going underneath the block. And this is a much colder looking map. And we can see what it looked like here. This is December 11th or 12th, okay, on the GFS from 12Z. Bring in front here. And it takes a look so it's far to the north. And the second system, <coughs> it tries to drop to the south. <coughs> it's trying to. So I give the model some credit here, all right? The, the, you can see the clear shift here. This is the um, the GFS for the second system, December 13th. Now this is the 12Z run here. And again, let me, oops, uh, bring in front, there you go. And you can see 12Z run, again, it, the first low is trying to go up on the GFS into the block. This cannot happen, it cannot. Okay, so the second piece of energy has to drop south and it drops towards the Virginia coast. Now, this has the making of a significant winter storm. The problem is, because the first low is here, it drives up warm air. So all the precipitation falls as rain. You'll see what I'm talking about in just a second here. That's why you don't get any cold temperatures. See, it's mostly rain, because the first system takes all the cold air out when it goes to Chicago. Again, this is bullshit. This is not correct. This is not going up north of Minnesota into the block. That is not correct. Okay, it will drop to the south and east underneath the block. Now here's the European model. The European model does the same sort of thing. It has the main low by Chicago, okay, and trying to drive it into the block. That's not going to happen. It just It's just not. And the European does the same thing as the GFS does. You see, there's the initial low. Big, big trough here, long wave trough, all right? See the low here? There's the black circle. There's the block, right? See, what's, look what it does. It drives it north into James Bay, into the block. No, that's not going to happen. It's just wrong. So it's going to go underneath it. Indeed, here's the European ensemble. You see what it does? Oh, let me bring this up. Look what it does. This is the, there's the anomaly right there. It goes underneath it. See how it's going underneath the block? And it heads toward the middle Atlantic coast and you get a snowstorm out of it, out of this one. So <clears throat> the one of the third, 12th and 13th, this is way up in the air. There's a lot of solutions here. The models have, are mostly having trouble figuring out the blocking and where the low is going to go. So expect a lot of changes here. But I'm very bullish about the one December 12th, 13th, or 14th. I don't know it'll be 11 or 12. I, I think it's more likely to be December 13th and 14th. So I like this solution a lot. I think uh, this one here, I think this is the correct solution. Anyway, that's the short video. Hopefully it gets this out. I'm going to load it up on the YouTube page and on the Facebook page. You can take a look at it. And I was, again, I apologize for getting it out late, but it's just a complicated situation. It took too long to write this out. This is meteorologist DT from Weather Risk. I'll see you on the Twitter page and on the website and the Facebook page.